Welcome to the next tutorial in electrical machines. We were discussing the alternators and in this particular tutorial we are going to discuss few problems based on salient pole synchronous machine. Before that let us revise some of the important concepts that is going to be used in this particular tutorial. We know that in a salient pole synchronous machine the air gap is not uniform and hence the current which is associated with the armature will have two components one is the direct axis and another is the quadrature axis so depending upon the direct axis and the quadrature axis reactance the current will be distributed so we will be having a direct axis component and another will be having quadrature axis component the armature current will have two components based on the angle phi, the direct axis and quadrature axis components will be estimated with the help of the value of psi. The psi is nothing but the actual angle between the induced EMF E0, that is what is the induced EMF E0 under the no load condition and the current IA. And there is one more angle which will be used that is delta delta is the angle between the induced emf e0 and the voltage v so v is the terminal voltage and e0 is the generated voltage where phi is the phase angle between the terminal voltage v and the current ia so this is the cos factor angle so you will be having power factor angle uh, phi and there is an internal angle psi which is the relationship between the internal voltage E0 and the current IA and the external uh, terminal voltage V and the internal generated EMF will give you an angle delta. So the current IA that is the armature current will be distributed as the vector sum of the two component one is the direct axis component and another is the quadrature axis component direct axis component is ia sin phi and the quadrature axis component is ia cos psi where the tensile value we can obtain from certain manipulation and calculation in the triangle concept that is being used in the phasor diagram and hence for the generating mode and the motoring mode we will be having the value of tensile which is v sin phi plus ia x q divided by v cos phi plus ia r a so here the positive sign which is there in the generating mode will become the negative sign in the motoring mode and we can find that the delta that is the power angle or the torque angle is basically psi minus phi for the generator and it is phi minus psi for the motor so for the generator and motor the direction of the angle will reverse and that will give you the power angle delta now the generated emf e0 for the generator and the motor is given by the relationship v cos delta plus iq ra plus id xd so here the positive sign of the current will be becoming the negative sign in case of the motor now if the armature resistance is negligible or neglected then in that case we can neglect this component of the current iq ra and we can have only id xd in the equation and if we neglect the armature resistance then for the generating mode and the motoring mode the 10 delta value is given by iaxq cos phi divided by v plus minus iaxq sin phi where plus goes for the generator and minus goes for the motor so these equations are important in solving the problem based on salient pole synchronous machines whether it is alternator or generator motor in this tutorial we will focus our discussion on the generating aspect that is the alternating aspect first problem if we have a 480 volt 60 hertz delta connected four pole synchronous generator so the other name of alternator is three phase synchronous generator so always the synchronous generator we will be taking as three phase and it will be producing the alternating emf that is ac in the three cycle or three phases so the direct axis reactance is given to be 0 0.1 ohms and the quadrature axis is given to be 0 0.075 ohms the armature resistance may be neglected so we can neglect the armature resistance as it is very small 
at full load this generator is supplying a current of 1200 ampere and a power factor of 0.8 lagging we have to determine the internal generated voltage ea of the generator at full load condition assuming that it is a cylindrical rotor of reactance xd so cylindrical rotor means the air gap is uniform and you will be not having the quadrature axis only direct axis will be there on the other hand if you take the salient pole rotor then the air gap will not be uniform in that case both the direct axis and quadrature axis will be there in the current as well as the reactance and hence the generated emf will be different from that of the cylindrical rotor so this problem we are going to solve and the connection we remember that this is a delta connected machine because it is a three phase synchronous generator so when we solve the problem from cylindrical rotor perspective since it is a delta connected machine then the current which is given to be 1200 ampere we have to divide it with root 3 because we know that in delta connected machine our line voltage is equal to root 3 times the phase voltage so the phase voltage we have to obtain because all the calculations we are going to do on single phase perspective and then we can back transform it to three phase system so always uh, any problem based on three phase system we solve it in single phase and then we back transform in three phase equivalent terms so here since it is a delta connected network the phase voltage of the armature current is line current divided by root 3 which is given to be 693 ampere and the power factor is given to be 0 0.8 so the value of theta is 36.87 which is cos inverse of 0.8 and the induced emf ea we know that from previous uh, tutorial also we have discussed the voltage regulation there we have discussed this that the generated emf is the terminal voltage plus the net drop due in the synchronous reactance because here we have neglected the armature resistance so we are not taking armature resistance into account so this is the emf when it is a cylindrical rotor machine you note that we we are getting an angle of 6.1 degree which is with respect to zero degree of the voltage so uh, my terminal voltage is the reference and the emf which we are getting is at an angle of 6.1 degree with respect to the terminal voltage so this angle is known as the torque angle or the power angle 6.1 degree now when we have a salient pole rotor then the armature current will be distributed in the direct axis and the quadrature axis and the emf which is produced in the machine will be having two components we have seen in the equation fundamental concept as the emf is having the iara component and ia xq component so in this case the emf will be different from the one which we have obtained for the cylindrical motor machine so the reference we are taking always as the terminal voltage and the armature resistance since we are neglecting so we will not have any drop due to armature resistance now here we can find that the delta value is 4.65 which was 6 degree in case of the previous case hence we can obtain the value of id and iq resolving the armature current so armature current is distributed in the direct axis and the quadrature axis depending upon sine theta plus delta and cos theta plus delta so direct axis will have the sine component and quadrature axis will have the cos component here the delta is the power angle which we have got 4.65 and theta is the power factor angle which is equal to 36.87 these depend upon the type of the load that is being connected in the machine now the direct axis and the quadrature axis of the current which we have obtained we can convert it into polar coordinate and we will be having the magnitude as well as the phase angle and we can put it in the equation of the emf where emf is the terminal voltage plus the net drop due to the resistance plus the net drop due to xd and xq xd is the direct axis and xq is the quadrature axis component so the armature emf which is developed is equal to 524.3 angle 4.65 the point to be noted here is that the magnitude of the emf ea is not much affected by the angle is considerably different so here we can say that angle is 4.65 which was different from the previous case of 6 degree and the magnitude is not much 
different as compared to seven fold machine. Problem number two. A three phase alternator has a direct axis synchronous reactance of 0.7 per unit and quadrature axis synchronous reactance of 0.4 per unit. For a full load of 0.8 power factor lagging condition, determine the load angle and no load per unit voltage. So we need to determine the load angle delta and what is the no load per unit voltage E0. So when we are solving the problem in per unit system, we can take the voltage as one per unit because it will be easy to solve the problem based on per unit system. So voltage we are taking one per unit and XD and XQ value is given in the problem. So it is 0.7 per unit and 0.4 per unit. Per unit means it is independent of the unit. So we do not have ohm as the unit, rather we have per unit system. Now the power factor is given 0.8 power factor. So cos phi is 0.8. We can obtain the value of phi as 36.9 and sin phi will be 0.6. So if we take the armature current also one per unit, then in that case, we can obtain what is 10 delta from this equation considering that armature resistance can be neglected. So armature resistance is zero, then we know that 10 delta is Ixq divided by cos phi plus uh, V plus IQ sine phi. Here the plus sign is only for the generating mode and this tutorial is based on alternator. So we will be having the positive sign always. So 10 delta coming to be 0 0.258 substituting the value of Ia, XQ, voltage and IQ and the power factor angles. So delta coming to be 16.5 degree. So this is the power factor angle and hence we can resolve the current as ID is equal to IA sine phi plus delta which is equal to 0.78 ampere and we can put it in the induced EMF equation which is V cos delta plus ID XD. Here again I can repeat that armature resistance is zero so we do not have the component uh, loss associated with RA component. So that gives me the E0 as 1.553. The next problem a three phase star connected 50 hertz alternator Direct axis synchronous reactance is 0.6 per unit and quadrature axis is 0.45 per unit. The generator is delivering a rated KVA at rated voltage. Rated means full load. So when you have the rated condition of the power, this is the complex power or the apparent power and the rated voltage conditions means full load voltage. The 0.8 power factor is the condition lagging calculate the open circuit voltage and the voltage regulation. We know that voltage regulation is the difference between the no load voltage minus the full load voltage divided by full load voltage into 100. So this we have already covered in the previous tutorial. You have to take the resistive drop at full load as 0.015 per unit. So we cannot neglect the resistive drop now in this particular problem. It is already given to us. Now let us see. Let us solve this problem in per unit. So armature current and voltage both will be in per unit and the value of XD, XQ and armature resistance is already given in the problem. It means that the value of 10 psi which is uh, we know from the revision to problems that yes this is the uh, formula that can be used for 10 psi knowing the drop and the sine and cos phi components of the power factor we can get the 10 psi as 1.288. So if we do the 10 inverse of 1.288, we'll get 52.2 degree. It means what is delta we need to know that is the power factor angle, which is psi minus phi. Psi we have got 52.2 and phi is the power factor angle, which is cos inverse of 0.8. So that is equal to 36.9. So we'll have 15.3. And the component of ID and IQ coming from the armature current, we will be obtaining uh, which is equal to 0 0.79 and 0 0.61 which is Ia sin psi and Ia cos psi. So knowing the value of the drop, we can obtain the induced EMF E0 as V cos delta plus IQ RA plus ID XD. So the drop which is associated with RA and the drop which is associated with XD with the voltage terminal V cos delta, we getting 1.448. And hence the per percentage regulation we can obtain as E0, that is we have obtained 1.448. This is the no load voltage minus the full load voltage we have assumed one per unit and that gives to me 44.8%. Next problem. A three phase star connected synchronous generator or the alternator is supplying a current of 10 ampere having a phase angle of 20 degree lagging at 400 volt. 
find the load angle and the components of armature current ID and IQ if XD is 10 and XQ is 6.5 ohms. The armature resistance you can neglect. So in this particular case, again we have to find the armature current resolving into component ID and IQ for the given three-phase machine. So we will start our problem from the load angle which is cos phi is cos of 20 degree because we have a phase angle of 20 degree between the voltage and the current hence it is 0.94 and sin phi is 0.3482. We have been given that the armature current is 10 ampere so the 10 delta we need to find first because we have to resolve the armature current in the direct and quadrature axis component. So this will have Ixu cos phi divided by B plus Ia xq sin phi which is equal to 0 0.1447. So delta coming to be 8.23 if we find the 10 inverse of 0 0.1447. Once we have got the value of delta we can obtain Id and Iq in of the armature current components as sin phi plus delta and sin cos phi plus delta. So that gives me 4.73 and 8.81 because the delta value is 8.23 and the phi value is 20 degree. The drop which is associated with IDXD component is 47.3 because the ID component is 4.73 and the XD is 10. This drop is necessary to find the induced EMF. Now once we know the drop, we can have the component no load induced EMF. Here the armature resistance is 0, so we do not have IERA component and we can find what is the no load induced EMF. This comes to be 443 volt. Now, once we know the component of the no load induced EMF E0, the percentage regulation is the difference between the no load voltage minus the full load voltage into 100 as compared to the full load voltage which is the rated voltage. So here we are getting the 443 as the E0 value and 400 as the terminal voltage. So that gives to me 10.75 as the percentage voltage regulation. So this uh, completes the third tutorial on alternator on saline pulled machine. See you in the next lecture. Thank you for now.